Hey guys, welcome back for game number two of our uh, of our beautiful day today full of Warcraft, and the game just got uh, finished, right? It was a test. It was just a test. Was it, was it just me? Yeah, it was just a test game. Okay. So our first best of threes behind us. We saw Reprisal defeating Lun. Lun coming back out of retirement or army duty, I guess both. Looking really strong. I thought he was going to take it, but in the end, Reprisal did manage to pull through. And game number two, we're going to be seeing Reprisal again. This time he's going to be going up against Law Lyot, the big, big name in Korea recently, with, of course, his Warden. And against Human, that's exactly what we need to be expecting. First map is going to be Echo Isles, and the countdown is starting right now. I think uh, this might be the real game. Yeah, Reprisal getting that first win under his belt. Really good for him, especially against Lun, who might be a bit of, uh, one of the better players here. Minyuk and Baini being the two players that are not expected to be performing too well. Baini especially, but Baini actually just defeated Focus. So we'll bring you guys the results here as we learn them. But now we are in our matchup. Orc versus, uh, Human versus Night Elf, Reprisal versus Law Light. We're on Echo Isles, and of course... It's gonna be the warden. If it's not the warden, I don't know. I have to, I have to eat my shorts or something because that's what we have to count on here. I just asked Yoss here in our short little break for a prizel. Does he sometimes play MK? And he answered with yes. Sometimes he does play MK. You think that has to be the answer here, Yoss? Echo Isles. We haven't seen a warden lose in a long time. Yeah, that's true. But we have seen like crazy entertaining matches coming out of Echo Eyes. We just saw the last game Orc against Human here. And that was also pretty entertaining and impressive. But Human against Night Elf, I can just recall Rudin against Hawk, European Pro Qualifier. That was one of the beautiful games that we have seen. And there are like more games that are being played in the recent past on Echo Eyes that have just been crazy. But we're going to have a Warden as a first hero here against an Archmage from Reprisal. And there's still one kind of special thing about Echo Eyes. And since Yannis is probably still there, do you want to give us some? <laughs> well, there's still only one shop, so uh, shop control is indeed important. True, true. So thank you very much for these kind words. And yeah, let's head into the game and see what's going on. We're going to have an Ancient of War creeping with that early archer coming out. And this is always a nice spot or a nice creep camp to open the game with, especially with the Warden. She will be level 2. Just let's just go through some scenarios. This can be a boots of speed drop that is nice against Archmage because you can catch up with him. You slow him down with the Shadow Strike, then you can attack him and get auto hits on him. We have Pen of Energy being dropped there. This is even more like some kind of a nightmare for a human player. And then there are like some kind of tier two items like Ring of Regeneration and so. But let's just pretend to see one of the good items being dropped. Yeah, especially if he founds, uh, finds the Boots of Speed here right away before they're available. This opposing hero is going to be potentially in a lot of trouble. I'm really interested to see Reprisal's creep route here. What does he try to go for? And he's going to go for the instant creep of his natural. He even likes to do this on Secret Valley sometimes, so don't uh, assume that this is going to be an instant expansion. In fact, I think that would be a really hard uh, thing to pull off because the Archmage, of course, needs his levels. He's really squishy on level 1 and he needs to get up and not die too easily to the Warden. And would you agree, like, going for the too quick expo would be the downfall here for him? No, I, I really have to say that this is uh, the best thing that you can do against the Warden because basically levels on your Archmage doesn't, doesn't do anything against Warden. Because even if you're level 3, what do you do with that hero? Because he has to run away all the time. The only thing that you can think about is like, do I want to open up the mercenary camp to have the access to the merc camp so that I can actually heal up my Archmage with that priest? Or sometimes you force the warden to go for the priest, commit at least two shadow strike to kill that one so that these shadow strike are not going to the Archmage. So ring of protection plus three for the um, item there from the mercenary camp, not impressive at all. And reprisal is bringing the fight to Lilliad. And this is something very, very good. He's actually distracting him or actually like forcing him to stay there and take the fight in his main base. He cannot go for the expansion. Of course, it's being scouted by one of the Wisps, but what I would like to see is an Ancient of War being constructed by that Wisp that is close by, so that he's actually creating some kind of a threat for that expo. But since the Arcane Tower was constructed earlier on, he's in a super comfortable spot. Ancient of War started creeping, and at, at the exact perfect time, Reprisal is in the main base again, harassing the Wisp, trying to get rid of one of the Moonwaits here. A lot of juice goes to the Wisp to heal them up. Priest is being attacked. One Dispel goes down on the water. Elemental, a second one is finishing that one 
off. In the meantime, he has to be careful with the Ancient of War creeping that camp. But so far, he's doing a great job of not killing anything with that Ancient of War, not denying any experience. And he's getting closer and closer to level 3 on that Warden. And we have a quick pause here. This gives us time to actually talk about what we kind of want to see and get some opinions here. That pause is over already though. And thank god you're on the cast here because you know this matchup, you know what's going on. I was totally wrong, Reprisal did go for the immediate expansion. Now he does have uh, difficulty finding his level 3, but as you said, might not even be that important because the warden is not level 3 just yet. At this stage in the game, before her level 3, she just wants to be, well, kind of left alone and be able to creep up. And with this Nightcrawler, is it gonna be enough? Yes, now she's level 3 and now the Archmage is in a lot of trouble. Not even 500 hit points to his name. But Footman still in the main and Footman get the Moonwell actually. Repair coming in a little too late, a rare mistake we are not used to seeing from Law Lion. At the same time, expansion is up. Wisp was here, did scout this. There was no Ancient of War, however, coming that you were uh, looking forward to. Tier 2 for the Nile is almost done, though, and we also see a Hunter's Hall. But Jesus Christ, so extremely late. This is very reminiscent of the European Night Elves, with the Thunder's Hall being super duper late. There's also no backup expansion here, no counter expansion for the Night Elf. I guess it wasn't really a possibility because the human was hanging around and he has to expect that one to be cancelled. But now he has the level 3 ward. Now he's gonna try to make his magic happen. Archmage still level 2. Wisp scouting him right now, wants to go for the Murlocs, but the Warden will be there, so he will not be able to take this camp. Sells the Ring of Protection, by the way, in the middle at the shop, gets the Staff Teleportation. No Boots of Speed, Tier 2 for Reprisal, started already, and the impact of the Warden really hasn't been felt so far. Yeah, it's crazy. The creep route and the, the aggression that he used early on, that was picture perfect. Level 2 Shadow Strike now, so he knows his economy will be safe. He's already taking to tier 2 because he got all the time in the world. Arcade Tower is draining the mana from that Warden, so she's actually useless right now. Of course, one Shadow Strike is almost killing off that Archmage. He's down to 200 HP and less. There is no counter expansion. You said it, Huntress Hall is fairly late, but all the distraction in the early game, the kill of the Moonwell was kind of crucial. Also pulling the Wisp all the time from the wood so that they were not harvesting any lumber. Also reducing the amount of lumber that he got. Of course, he still got enough to get like two Ancient of Laws, but these are already late. He's pulling away the creeps, is hiding one of the archers to actually buy more mercenaries. So he already got a Berserker and a Priest. Now he got two of them. And yeah, Archmage still fairly low, no mana on that Warden, so he cannot use the Shadow Strike. But since he's on two gold mines without no without any upkeep, he gets a second tower in that expansion. He's not able to get that one, so he has to cancel it. But the Arcane Tower is still standing strong, burning the mana from the priest now. In the meantime, Reprisal creeping that mercenary camp now has to let go of it. There's a super aggressive Ancient of Wonders in the middle, so that he can actually buy potions from that. He will be on a solo hero, so he will probably try to get that Warden up as fast as he can. But so far, he's not killing anything. Human player coming back to the fight here, chasing away, driving away that Forest Troll Priest. No more dispels. Archmage still has to be careful. How far is the T2 take? About to be done for the human player. And then they will meet on equal tech levels. And I think the human player will just get rid of Loliath. And then he finally has the healing potions. Because of the creep route he took, he didn't have that priest available to himself since he didn't take the Merc camp. Speaking of mercenaries, Lolite actually stole the tr uh, troll twins. But yeah, so far he cancelled the tower. And that's it. Like, Lolite for the first time in a long time, his warden is not looking broken at all. Now Berserker being caught in the middle. The block from the footman. Jesus Christ, he keeps it up all the time. He gets the Berserker kill. That's not a, a tiny thing because he actually gets level 3 Archmage from this as well. Now Warden is creeping her natural, but there's no backup expansion here, no counter expansion. By the way, she almost dies to the creeps there. A little bit cutting it and maybe a little too close for comfort. He's on tier 2 now. He has his Ancients of Lore up, but there is no opportunity in sight to equal up on economy. This expansion is going to be the only expansion in this game, at least by the looks of it. And there's no tier 3. There's no resources for Lolliot. Boy, I, th I agree with you, man. He looks to be in a super tough spot. Yeah, I, I really don't see how he gets like out of that position. Of course, Dry's out on the field. Dispel is there, is research. He can 
abolish that water elemental, abolish magic is being used on another water elemental there. He's bringing more water elements to the fight because he knows that the Dryad doesn't have more mana to actually dispel it. But there's like more Dryads coming, more forest towards Shadow Priest. Not even sure where he's... Ah, uh, this is still the Shadow Priest from the early game. But the Blight Mage as the second hero with that seven mana is now getting rid of the mana of the first hero of the Knight of level 2 Fan of Knife and level 2 Shadow Strike are hitting that Archmage hard. But there is still a lot of stuff that can actually heal him up again. Should drop something to the ground or get a healing potion on that Blood Mage. But he's losing that one. Not not sure why he's actually losing that hero. Absolutely unnecessary. Since there's ah. no guard tower, he has to be very careful now. He's diving in on the first hero. There's still an invo potion as well as a heal scroll that can be used. But the regeneration is being cancelled. But behind all of this aggression, the expansion is coming up. And I think this might be the first big mistake from Reprisal. He had an opportunity there to send his Archmage over to scout for this. He basically has to expect that this is a possibility. He could have easily cancelled it with the water element, at least if the Dryads are not in position. Well, now it's uh, base defense time. He gets rid of a dry. The first mortar team is here. The Archmage is kind of okay on health again. The Warden is out of mana. So this army from the Night Elf is not looking too threatening currently, but this is mainly supposed to buy time. Everything else he gets here is nice. Of course, experience. That's what he wants. That's what he so desperately desires. And he's getting closer to the level 5 Warden. He's getting a lot of extra experience. And losing a few mortar teams as well might delay the push that is inbound soon. But losing so many Dryads as well, that may not have been the best control that we ever see, saw from Lolliot. Yeah, and if we just compare the numbers, 59 supply against 38 for Lolliot here. Now the first hero is being slowed using the teleportation staff to get out of there. There's nothing that can actually stun him. Killing off another footman goes up to level 5. Expansion, you said it. It was thrown down and constructed. Now it's finally finished. About to start mining from that one. Tier 3, 50% done for the Knight of Player. He's getting an Ancient of Wonders. Another one, because the one in the middle was killed earlier he's getting the first druid of the claw as well as the adapt train for that so master bears are, are coming sooner or later but in the meantime like it was a crucial moment to actually take a fight because he was like getting more and more units he was actually killing the reinforcements fairly easy with that warren and the drides but in the meantime the militia's coming to the fight getting rid of a few drides he's basically also limiting the forces of the knight of player but he's still catching and getting hold of the reinforcements there are two militias coming he's going for that expansion and he wants to get rid of it immediately yeah, nicely using the drives. That is something we've been seeing quite a lot from Law Light. Separating those from the main army. Well, th at the moment, they are the main army. There's no bears yet. And catching the reinforcements, getting one rifleman. Reprise wants to get this uh, push going as quickly as possible. Law Light still at 47 supply only. Reprisal, though, not that much either. Only 59. And the fans of Knives might be coming in real soon. How many heal scrolls does he have? One. And a scroll of regeneration, so that might be able to be bursted through, but Lolai doesn't even try to go for it. He's cutting off more reinforcements. This, of course, buys time for the guard towers co to come up, and the expansion is too late to save this one. Lolai's expo is gone, and actually Reprisal might follow up with an expansion of his own. Expansion number two down here, but for the time being, he's going into the main. He has a TP, of course, if he needs to get out, if things get too dicey. Because this might turn out to be an overextension, but he has, doesn't have to fear too much, at least at the moment. Yeah, and the only thing that can actually create a comeback here is the level 6 Warren. He knows that this is the reason why he's committing all his mana to kill a few militias. That is the reason why he tries to catch more reinforcements. And now the reinforcements are kept in the base. It's 67 supply, but this 67 supply will not all be in the fight. Another Moonwell is being killed. So he's heavily supply block, 48 out of 40 supply. The Siphon mana is standing strong against that hero. But let's compare the experience on the second hero that is out for quite some time. It's super low. If the Drides are able to get rid of that one uh, of the one rifleman as well as the last remaining mortar team i think he might be in a good fight here this is the fight where the reprisal doesn't want to take shadow strike is hitting that blood mage the dried is microed away in the very last second four hp is still standing strong he can kill the towers because the towers also give some experience here in warcraft so this will give some more experience to the warden he has to keep the drives alive he has to get some more units here but yeah sooner or later he will face the army that is so strong that he will probably not be able to overcome that with the warden because even if the warden hits level six at some point if you don't kill any here uh, any units and if there are no corpse corpse on the ground there is like absolutely no use for that ultimate as well yeah Towers are down, you say they're giving some experience, but still. One Warden to rule them all has been the motto of a lot of Lolliot games against humans, but this time around, it's just 
totally not working. Not at all. The price is amassing a bigger army now. The first push he hit there down at the expansion was 60 supply was enough. I imagine when he gets up to 80, he's going to be driving into the Night Elf main and looking to put a nail in the coffin. Or is he maybe going to play this more slowly? Is he going to go for another expansion and just draw, uh, dry out the Night Elf, bleed him out over time? He look, again look, look, uses the, the Dryads. Yeah, Warden is coming for the Militia, the Dryads found them, this is the experience she, see, she so desperately wants and needs, you say it. Level 6 is the only chance of a comeback in this game, and I don't even know if it's a good chance. But he's trying to take use of that one chance he has. He's gonna lose a Dryad on the way as well, I guess he got 3, 4, maybe 5, uh, 5 at the most, no Militia kills, and it's not enough. He still has 100 experience missing. This is like 3 more Militia kills, maybe 4. And that will be her level up. She does have the staff, but I don't think she has Blink. She had Fan of Knives and um, the um, Shadow Strike, excuse me, abilities before. And he didn't really have the resources to go for a tone of a training. Wow, big potion of invulnerability being dropped by that Ogre Major in the middle. That's definitely a crucial item to have. And yeah, Lolite is looking for a fight that he will take with like the most... Like, he will try to get a nice bang and then just get the most units that he can possibly get out of that. And probably take a fight where he got like 70 against 80 or 84 or I don't know. Like, he will definitely be 10 supply down. And probably he can overcome that because he, he's not in a spot where he can actually set up a second expansion. We also see two attack upgrades on the mortar teams. And their upgrades scale, scale so good on units that have like a high DPS. So another mortar team is being caught off guard. He's so good in catching reinforcements with the drides because the drides cannot be slowed because they are magic immune. And this is the reason why he's able to kill more reinforcements with the drides and can separate them from the army. But now you can see that he wanted to produce the 70 supply army of bears and stuff. But now he's being hit at a moment where he was not prepared to be hit. Anti-magic potion being used. Fan of knives on all the units. We have three heal scrolls that should keep the units alive. Dry it separated from the rest of the army. Now it's not so good anymore. The warden still standing strong. Uh, still, just a little bit of experience is missing. If he could get rid, uh, rid of that watch elementals, he should have that level six. But since the dryads are separated from the rest, there's no chance of them diving in before they die to the mortar teams or actually take a lot of damage. So now uh, Reseal Alliance finds himself in a very, very bad spot. A lot of uh, Dispel is being committed to the fight so that he can actually get that level 6 by detonating one of the water elementals. Another round of Dispel on top of the casters. Dryads coming in from the other side, but mortar teams doing a great job of sniping them. Level 6 for the Warden. The Avatar of Vengeance is standing strong in the fight. We see one Spirit of Vengeance is taking part in that fight as well but this is the only one second one coming a lot of drides dying in the other part of the fight but yeah it's just too strong for the human player and the warden's out of mana now she had to use the anti-magic so early in the beginning of that fight lost so much to the siphon now she has a second one running but there's basically no mana anymore potion of mana gets another fan of knives but this is just too much stuff he can't fight through this still 80 supply Almost looking untouched is Reprisal here and Law Lyot, man. He has nothing. He has a Warden. He loses his last unit, which was the Shadow, uh, the Berserker here from the Trolls. He's healing up once again with the Moonwells, but of course, this is just way too much. He's looking for, war for one more glorious hero kill. Perhaps he's gonna get... No, he's not. The Blood Mage survives. We have the Invulnerability and the Healing to go with it. And the Warden now finally surrounded. Finally has to give up. And GG out from Law Lyot. I was almost expecting Echo to be a fairly easy win for Law Lyot, but the early game decisions from Reprisal were just absolutely perfect. Instant expansion, pressure the Night Elf, that way you get your expo up, you deny his expansion, well actually he didn't deny, there wasn't one produced, and then you just hit your, your early timing, 60 supply, he can't deal with it, he doesn't have enough, he doesn't have a crazy ass warden that just ruins everything by herself. Reprisal man. Starting str uh, weak today, but getting really strong over time. Now, yeah. we say the human was strong. Where would you say that the Nile could have done things better? Where were his mistakes? I think we both agree it was kind of lost in the early game. What should he have done better? Yeah, it's like either you sacrifice like one or two Moonwells and trade it for like kills at the expansion, or you really set up another threat down there at the expansion by creating an engine of war and calling at least a few more militias to get rid of that, or just like get the human player to get back to it so that he is actually dealing with that engine of war. Maybe committing earlier on to like somewhat of an aggression towards that Archmage because he was like very conservative 
uh, of the use of his mana, so he was not using Shadow Strikes on the Archmage, and he was really waiting for that level 3, and sometimes this being patience and waiting is like, it's taking too long, it's not doing something for you in the earlier stages. But on the other hand, changing up your creeping patterns is something that wins you games. This is also what I, from my experience, think is giving you the edge as a human player on that very high level. As soon as you change your creeping patterns, and we have seen it, the super fast expansion with that aggression coming out of the human is something that we rarely see. And maybe even Lulite has to change up his game sometimes. Maybe go for more aggression with, uh, for example, a demon hunter. Because there's also like Warchief that points out and that he says like sometimes he's like, Warden is strong, but he doesn't like the ultimate all that much. Because the level 6 Demon Hunter is like almost GG. This guy pops out with the Chaos Damage, with the Splash, and he's like right there. There's nothing that you can do about it. But the Spirit of Vengeance is sometimes not as impressive. So I think the more solid, more stable game can be created with like Demon Hunter Panda as a second hero. But on the other side, we have seen that Warden be successful over and over again. It, it's, it looks so easy when it works, but when it's falling apart, there are like so many details that didn't work out in the last game. Usually, he always makes his Warden work. He is, after all, the master of the Warden, but it fell flat on its face on Echo Isles. We are wasting no time. We're in the second map already of our second best of three today at the WCA APAC qualifier. Lolliot is down 1-0. Reprisal is leading, and we see the first big difference. And, of course, it's no surprise here in Amazonia. It is going to be the Demon Hunter. It's just so hard to get level three. And Neo, I think you should mute your microphone. I don't know if it's muted on stream or if I can just hear it on Skype, but it's a, it's a little bit irritating. It's so just you could on go Skype, ahead and mute. sorry. Yeah, yeah guys, since you're wondering, Neo is moving while we are casting. Like, he's getting into a new apartment right now. All right, Amazonia. We have seen some crazy immolation ownage from night elves against humans creeping the natural but usually those are not the top tier humans that this happens to are we going to be expecting a straight up one base game here yours yeah he's kind of famous for that he also likes to use that style that you mentioned earlier with that like casters kiting mortar teams with upgrade but what he's also famous for is going for that rock golem creeps for the natural expansion right from the start he's not going for the laboratory he's not going for the safe one and I cannot emphasize enough on that, like changing creeping patterns is like the most important thing on that level because everybody knows what everybody is doing in terms of strategy and stuff. But changing your creeping pattern is also messing with your opponent because he has to come up with a solution on the fly. But this is not something that Reprisal is doing like for the very first time. I've seen them do that quite a couple of times. And there's not too much that you can actually do about it because Demon Hunter on the other side was creeping himself as level 2 already with the Claws of Attack and the Gauntlets of Strength plus 3. There's a nice Wand of Mana stealing, not the best item. Big healing would be better, for example. But he's not setting up an expansion. He's probably going for attack, yep. He already lost one peasant, is gonna lose a second one to the archer arrow coming into the back right there. The wisp detonate came a little early, wisp was hurt, so he didn't get the kill on the water elementals, and he actually used the detonate on only one water elemental. Ideally, of course, you would like to get two with that. And yeah, not too much damage being done, one or two peasants lost rather, but he got his level two, he got the big item, and more importantly, he got a big creep cam that cannot be punished anymore. He can now creep his way to level three with the Archmage with the tiny cams. And actually we see a tower at the natural. So it doesn't seem to be a one base game at all. We already have the Hunter's Hall no, for Law Light and one Ancient of War. The double Ancient of War, mass Hunters all in. Basically aggression has kind of disappeared from the meta game, but he's still looking to try to do some damage here with a few hundreds is coming soon We have no boots of speed on either hero as reprisal is trying to keep this demon hunter at bay Luring him away from the expansion and he's gonna get the mercenaries right now He uses the little trick with the archer and gets the trolls at the merc camp and right then he's gonna add some pressure towards the natural yeah, and that's very dangerous here, because with the Claws of Attack 100 and the Mercenaries, you can actually attack the Town Hall while it's still being built, and then you can cancel that one, and this will, like, cause a loss of a lot of resources. We see that Boots of Speed on the Archmage being bought right now. He sold that Rent of Mana Stealing. I was kind of disappointed that he didn't use it on the Demon Hunter to actually get a few Water Elementals on the field. Now another Militia dies here, or almost dies, remains with 6 HP, but he will die sooner or later. With the Mercenary Editions and the Hunters coming to the party, he got a fairly good amount of units to deal with the 
A limited amount of footmen and a few militias here. The one militia is being killed finally. The priest is still standing strong. That's pretty damn good. Against the water elementals, we saw the dispel earlier in the first game that we have seen on Echoites. And now he's bringing a few more militias to the party. Lumber Mill is being constructed in the main base of the human player. But there's not a, sec a second guard tower that can be upgraded. And yeah, without the, with the lack of the guard tower and only one of these arcane towers, I'm not sure if we can actually keep that expansion alive of course it's being harassed and we see immediately a counter expansion being started close, close to the goblin laboratory here for Lulite. he's tacking as well so he's not committed to win the game right here right now exactly he has a plan b if this pressure doesn't kill it i don't think he expects the pressure to kill this expo after all his demon hunter is kind of low so he can't deal too much damage with his first hero but his mercenary and huntresses are still standing strong getting a lot more footmen he was using so many of his resources that he of course needed to use for the expo the footman production was really really slow only now they are coming back in again and now we only have two remaining more and more militia have to be called from the main all the time and this of course also cuts down your lumber intake significantly he's still looking good on that though he still has decent lumber and now he's going to be able to get the berserker would be an important kill he doesn't want to get the fireball hit he gets it with a footman anyways but the an now super low and he's not level 3 just yet, but at some point Lolaid will have to most likely retreat. Would love to get that AM, but the boots of speed make that impossible unless he's asleep! Unless he's asleep! Holy crap! 11 HP! That was a little too close for comfort, but Demon Hunter, don't know how much more he can do here. Shop is coming up. Archmage should be safe. If he gets out another mana burn on that Archmage, he's super dead. And now he's idling around for another round. And yeah, I don't know, like, he's teching, human player reprisal is teching right now, he got the expansion set up, we see the counter expansion for the uh, Knight of player, the trade-off for the Berserker kill was definitely not worth it, almost losing his first hero or being forced to use the Town Pearl earlier on without a shop on the field here, so he cannot really heal up. Now, speaking of healing up, Demon Hunter is coming to the party, wants to cancel that healing on the Archmage, we see that there's only one entrance to the expansion, if he gets rid of that farm, he could actually use a mana burn on that Archmage, I think he might be in range to do that, almost a surround on the first hero here of Lolite, he's down to zero mana, so no more mana burn from that guy. Ancient of War already in position to creep the natural expansion. Tree of Life is just finished. Ancient of Lore is constructed. Two of them in the main base of the Night Elf. He got enough Moon Whites to go up to 50 supply right now. Two of them are still pretty damn full of Moon Juice. We see that there is a Panda being called as a second hero. And speaking of that, I said it. Like, this is the strongest hero combination for me personally in the game. Demon Hunter Panda can deal so efficiently with heroes cause of the mana burn and on the other hand with units cause of the breath of fire combination with the drunken haste so personally for me this is the strongest hero combination in the game robot rich once said why should i go for anything else than demon Hunter panda it's the best heroes in the game and you seem to agree with him he made the Warden work many times, not in the last map though. This time it's gonna be the traditional choice. Demon Hunter Panda. Speaking of Demon Hunter, he just hit level 3, the level 2 mana burn of course. So strong. Look at the Archmage HP melting away right here. He's only level 2, he's still very very squishy and he's being chased down. Now he's kind of fortunately out of mana. While all of this is going on where uh, Lolite finds some damage here to be dealing to the Yuma in the middle of the map, the Tree of Life is up. He upgraded, uh, researched uh, the Nature's Blessing already. And I'm kind of surprised here, he keeps on looking for more damage. Wouldn't his time be better invested creeping? I guess he's going there right now, but these seems to me like it's a little bit of time wasted. Yeah, I, I also do not agree to what he just did. Because the expansion is already delayed, he, he doesn't want to have like a super delayed tier 3 take, so this is the reason why he was researching nature's, nature's Blessing on that Tree of Life, the expansion. I don't agree with that fully, I think like getting the Nature's Blessing as soon as you hit tier 2 and then get that expansion into play would be the better call. Then you delay your take but you have a faster expansion, because uh, it can already start running towards that location, so you can... You can already assume how safe Lolite is playing that game by researching that Nature's Blessing and also setting that expansion up so far in the back, like at the laboratory. Usually there's a very cool spot, the green camp, where you can actually ex uh, expand and then eat through the forest. Was not willing to do that to like expand in a common position. Because also like common, posi common positions are also like just like the uh, common creeping patterns. If you're familiar with that, you actually know that you can use like a Zeppelin fling over it, come over the forest, kill it or just like scout for it and uh, if you do it in like an unexpected position it's always better so yeah he's setting that expo up in play we see two workshops and the mountain king as a second hero two workshop and two arcane sanctums so probably 
lots of mortars, lots of casters, lots of kiting. And yeah, he's short on wood a little bit. He, al he was already researching the first attack upgrade there for the rifleman, which means first attack upgrade for the mortar teams as well. 50 out of 66 supply right now. He definitely needs a few more farms. He's getting sorcerers at the moment. And I think he's willing to go for that combination that he likes to use with a lot of mortars and casters and the lack of breakers. Yeah, we saw that a lot from him on one base especially. You think in a two base scenario with the huge AD supply armies clashing, it's still gonna be without breakers? Yeah, if you can make it work on one base, why wouldn't you make it work on two? But against a panda, it's like super risky. I don't know, I, I don't like that kind of style. I, I played it myself and I still don't understand why it's successful, why you can pull it off and why it works. It feels like Night of players haven't figured out the set of clicks that they have to do in order to overcome that. But the Agent of War Dried Creeping of that Granite Golem level 9 is so huge, that can be a huge item for him. Again, we see Lawlight with the Great Creep routes. Usually we don't see an Agent of War taking this Granite Golem comp, uh, camp, first of all, and especially not this early. Doesn't get reward with a great item, it's only a Crystal Ball. Don't say, tell me the Demon Hunter is dying. No, actually, the teleportation scroll keeps him alive. Something that we've been seeing a lot with the Night Elves playing against this mass mortar style is using the Dryads very offensively, driving them into the mortar teams. And it seems like that's something that Lolliot likes to do in basically all of his games. Use his Dryads excessively and, uh, yeah, control them more offensively than just having them, them on A click and dispel, but actually moving them into the mortar teams. Of course, they're going to be vulnerable, but there's more threats than just the Dryads to deal with. There's the Panda, as you said before, and there's the Demon Hunter. And then the Dryads standing inside of your uh, mortar teams, going to be tough. I thought the Reprisal's push was going to be a little bit late, but somehow he's already up at 78 supply, and this might be the best fighting chance he's gonna have in this game to win a fight because right now his supply is absolutely towering over Lolai. The militia are coming in from the left and we see a single breaker so it can't really be called a breaker army. Mostly it is really the mortar teams. The double workshop you mentioned before. We have five mortar teams once those two near the main join the army and Lolai has to make this defense work but it's not gonna be easy. He only has one bear in here. The panda has to carry a lot of weight, but there's no mana items on him. I guess there's the clarity, but that doesn't really count, especially when you're st standing in the middle of everything. MK, though, only level 2. Not too strong yet. Mass Wisps coming in for detonate. One water elemental will die very quickly, but so does a bear, and the Dryads are already taking the brunt of the damage from the mortar teams with 1-0 upgrades. He has to kite backwards. The MK is out of mana. But he's being forced away from his expansion and the towers are coming up already. He has to retreat, retreat, retreat all the time. There's no staff, by the way, on Lolliot's side. Really saving all of his resources for every bit of army he can muster up. Level 3 now for the MK. Drunk Ace, Breath of Fire finally hitting nicely into the mortar teams. But the Scroll of Healing is there to counter it, but that was the last one. No, wait, there isn't actually. There's actually one more on the MK. The Dryads are trying to stand inside the mortar teams, but it's not that many. Next, Breath of Fire dealing quite a bit of damage again. The MK and the Paladin. And by that, I mean the Panda, of course, LOL, is dying. Level 4 for the Archmage. Demon Hunter coming in again. Almost level 4, but there's no more healing. There's almost no more bears. There's only one more Dryad. And the Killer Instinct of Reprisal, he sees his opportunity. He's grasping it, and it seems like he's deciding the game right here. I guess it's a little bit too early to tell, though. More bears are coming in. Roar being used right now. The Demon Hunter in a bit of trouble. There's no mana for the Bolt. And this is the last Mortar team down. But... At the left, we see the towers coming up, but the bears are kind of doing a good job. But they can still be kited. They're slowed. And I guess one by one, these units are running into the meat grinder. But with no breakers, actually, there's two here. So the rejo isn't as amazing. And the Demon Hunter healing potion does not get used. It is the GG as Lolai taps out. And I guess the late expansion in the end did make a big difference. Yeah, the, the delay of the expansion was actually costing him the game. On the other side, I would have liked to see, like, an early game, like, commitment from him. Like, let's pretend he gets an Ancient of War close to the expansion, unscouted, that you can actually do close to the Mercenary Camp, like, in between Mercenary Camp and the natural expansion of the human player. Second Ancient of War, two Ancient of War production of Huntresses, getting that Mercenary Camp creeps that he did. Just, just in addition to have like two or three more Huntresses to that and commit to it and actually win the game right there. Because Archmage level 2, super low, taking bad trades, 
And I think if you if you go aggressive there, you just finish the game and win it right there. Because militias against huntresses are useless. Level two archmage against huntresses is useless. You have the priest to get rid of the water elementals. I think the strategy that he wanted to apply, because he was already down a map, was to go for that safe kind of play with the counter expo, and he played it super super safe. But this is also the reason why he lost it, because he played it way too safe, not taking any risk, and in the end. The game plan from Reprisal was more impressive, more successful. And what I have to say, Reprisal is now up with two wins, starting his day with two wins against two of the guys that are supposed to be in the top four that will advance to the next stage, at least when it comes down to our opinions and what we expected from these games. So he's definitely playing up to what we expected from him, not in the first kind of set that we have seen against Lin. He was struggling a little bit, but now against Lulayet, the probably best night of player in my opinion from South Korea or and maybe even in the world that was damn impressive and what do you think Neo are you there yes I'm here I was particular impressed by his timings I mean we talked about his micro before we talked about his strategies before but the timings especially on echo Isles, I feel were like split second perfect he arrived at the expansion when it was just finished there was basically no defense. I guess the Warden was not level 3. The Dryads had no dispel. So that was the first big timing. He got it easy. Second timing was when he approached the main base. And Lolai had just started to uh, produce bears to like 70 food or something. And he just got that timing. It was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. I'm really, really um, impressed by Reprisal's playstyle. On the other side... Lolliot, not so much. Echo Isles, I think um, you guys talked about uh, placing an Engine of War right next to the Expo. I think he wanted to save the Wisp to staff on it, but that failed heavily because Reprisal scouted it before. And then later, no blink on the Warden, no Echo Harass, nothing. This is not the uh, Lolliot that I know. Yeah, so far not showing up strong. And what you said, uh, yours. Reprisal man getting off to a great start two of the very very high caliber like the the big guns have already been defeated by him Lin and uh, Lolite which we just saw here So yeah, I actually did not expect him to get out of this uh, To get out of this round robin system, but man he has the perfect start to this day So anything is possible and our next game was supposed to be reprisal versus moon So another reprisal game, but moon versus uh, check they are still playing and it seems like it's gonna be a 1-1 one, one after this game So then there's gonna be another map. So uh, what's our plan here? What's our next game gonna be? I Am in the channel of moon versus check, so I think we're gonna go for the third game Where do you see it by the way that it's 1-1? Uh, one, one? It's on nice game TV. It's not 1-1 one, one yet. But uh, Moon is leading 1-0, and Czech just killed the, uh, the second hero, so that's always good. All right. Okay, um, we can... What, what else do we have? I hope you It's all... like for the third game, is like Gloon against Minyuk, Moon against Reprisal, Benny against Lolight, or Remind against Czech. Yeah, so Czech the is most... still occupied, of course. Um... Yeah, Moon as well, so... I... I think maybe sticking for the Czech Moon third game decider and then heading into like Moon Reprisal would be the best. We have, yeah. by the way, so a new result. Focus beat Lin 2-1 to one in Orc Mirror. Wow, so Lin is like struggling here a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a, t a tough road if it continues this way, especially. Yeah. And also considering there's going to be a lot, uh, lot more strong opponents. But if he... Uh, plays as well as he did in the beginning stages uh, as he did against reprisal. I think he still has a decent shot again I must say I'm surprised at how good he is considering uh, how shortly he has only been back um, Do we want to take a Short break here in a minute and then moon versus check probably that sounds good to me Remo. We're gonna do that. Let me just save the rankings that are updated already so yeah small break here and then we'll be back moon versus check most likely game number three minyuk by the way won two zero against remind what the hell is going on here yeah favorites dying left right and center as we have seen it in wca china boggles my mind all right quick break and then we'll be back 